Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I have a job right here that I want to work on and get started on. I thought that this might be a really good opportunity to show how we can take a relatively very simple machining operation that we need to perform and use our Miltronics CNC mill, we're going to go to the TRM 3016, use the conversational programming to program a bolt circle that we want to drill in this plate right here. All right, I made a just really simple drawing right here of uh, really the only dimension I need on it is the uh, bolt circle diameter, which is going to be 10 and a quarter inches, and then we're going to be drilling half inch holes. So these are just clearance holes for a 7 16 bolt to slide through there. This is going to end up going to a fixture that I'm going to be working on. It's going to be a large fixture that's going over into the flex, and uh, this is just one little simple component that I got to make. And I just thought this would be a great opportunity to do this over in the Miltronics and use our conversational. Now, traditionally, over the years, I would always take a part like this over to our manual mill machine, set this up typically on some parallels and use some toe clamps, hold it down. You got to find the center of it and you use your uh, bowl hole circle command on the DRO and go to each hole and drill that. That's how it's been done probably thousands of times. And with the addition of the CNC machines, it's making jobs like this much easier and faster to do. Now, is it gonna be faster than me going over there to the KVC mill, setting this up and drilling the holes? It'd probably be a little bit faster, just depends on what the setup is like, you know? So machining the holes obviously is gonna be very fast in the CNC mill, all right? But I still have some setup time over on the machine, you know, you got however you're going to fixture this, you're typically going to have to spend some time getting that vise or fixture or something set up to be able to hold this. Do same thing over on the manual mill. So we got a little bit of time there, but we have a bolt circle program over that we can use in the conversational programming to input our diameter and the number of holes that we want to drill, that kind of stuff. So that's what I wanted to show you today was how relatively easy it is that we can go to our Miltronics and do a little flange job like this, just drilling a, a bolt pattern in there. All right, so let's head over to the Miltronics and we'll start setting this up. Now, just to kind of speed things up, I've already got our vise set up ready to go for this. So what I did was I removed the other jaws. We've got our Mighty Bite jaws that's gonna be using these VersaGrip attachments. That's gonna work really nice so that you can put a, you can put an odd shape workpiece in here. In our case, we're gonna be going around and you got nice, uh, four points of contact there that we'll be clamping in on. I've also got these two machinist jacks in there. These are made by Edge Technology. Got the spacer in there and we'll be able to adjust these up to support these, these two areas of the flange when we're doing our drilling. All right, so we'll go back in here. And like I said, I've already kind of had this preset. I made me a couple little marks on here for the, uh, where the VersaGrip, um, where I was biting into it. So I'm just gonna set it right back in there. Now you gotta remember, this is just a flame cut piece. I'm sorry, it's actually a plasma cut piece. So it's not gonna be perfectly flat. Wherever we you know, touch off on the top, it's gonna change a little bit from here and there. So we're just gonna make sure that we have enough clearance above this so then the tools go around, it doesn't rub it or anything or break the tool off. But let's go ahead and get this guy clamped in. All right, so we've got that clamped, and I just want to peek my head in here and look back here and make sure that those Versa grips are in, are in fact biting in and they look like they are. We'll also take our machinist jacks, and I've got these, so you got a wide pad on here, but I've got them out, I've got them in far enough so that it's not going to mess with uh, our drill that's going to be drilling a hole in here. We've got it just in enough to support the plate, so bring those up. I've got a pin punch right here, take and just put a little bit of preload on it. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Run this jack up just till it touches. And then just put just a little bit of preload on that. Keep it from loosening up. All right. So the, the part is now set up. Let's go ahead and we'll use our Renishaw probe to find the middle of it and to find our, our Z0. We do have a uh, halo probe on, I'm sorry, a probe halo on there. This was given to me by uh, old boys or padded old boys over on Instagram. If you're moving the table around or moving the spindle down and it comes into contact 
with this uh, halo, you know, on the side. Maybe it comes in the side and pushes it, or even you're pushing up on the probe like that. It's going to detect it and it's going to stop the program. So this is designed to help save your rubies and save your tips from, from uh, crashes and breakage. All right, I'm going to go into hand wheel mode and bring our probe down and we need to touch it off on the top of the, the workpiece. So you can just do that anywhere. We're just going to do it right about there. So get this down and uh, let me get the program pulled up. All right, we're going to do a single surface Z, G54 offset. Uh, Z is going to be our zero position. Here we go. That's our Z position, so I'm going to go ahead and hand wheel it to the middle. And usually all I do is just, just get one of my rules and I just kind of eyeball it where it needs to be, both X and Y get it in the middle and then we'll find uh, we're just going to find the outside the inside of this was not burned very symmetrical round so we're going to uh, go off the outside of the part that's why i'm not going to be using a bore cycle right here to uh, find the the id all right we're ready to find x zero i usually run this a little slow just to start to make sure everything looks good technically if the probe does touch something it'll automatically stop Speed it up. Okay, that's the center of X. Now we're gonna do the same thing for Y. All right, there we go. We are in the center of our plate. So I think people are probably going to want to try to compare time. You know, we're, we're talking about doing this with our conversational CNC versus doing it manually. I've probably got a solid 30 minutes in getting the vise set up right here, getting our jacks in here, and now getting it centered up using our probe. So we've probably got, I'm going to say somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes on our setup time right now, just where we, just where we are. All right, so now we're ready to kind of jump over here onto our controller and start writing a conversational program to drill our holes. In that previous clip, I forgot to mention, I have already preloaded the two tools that we're gonna be using. Uh, so just so you know, we're using a 3 8 spot drill. This is a high speed steel spot drill and we're gonna be using a half inch diameter high speed steel drill. So those, I installed those, touched them off on the tool setter. So those are ready to go. So I got a little bit of time in doing that as well. All right, guys, we got you over here at the Miltronics controller. So let's go ahead and uh, start our program. The first thing that we're going to do is to F8 program. If you look down here at the bottom, we have all of our F keys. We're going to be referring to those. So we'll start with F8 program, F2 conversational edit, and then F2 new. All right, and just for transparency, I already went through this earlier just to make sure that I was going to be doing this right and telling you guys the right info. So I practiced it. Now we're going to do this again. You can see clamp ring right there. We're just going to go ahead and make another one. And we'll call this one version 2. So we'll go ahead and type in our file name. Clamp ring. And then we'll go V2. All right. And we're going to hit enter. Okay. Event zero, this is gonna define our stock and we can put our program name in there as well. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that. We're gonna go clamp ring. You can use inch or metric, whatever you prefer. I like inch. Work coordinate, we're gonna use G54 for our work offset. And you got subsets you can do use there as well. I have never gotten into subsets, but I understand uh, how they work. All right, stock type. We're gonna choose a cylindrical stock type. So for our radius, that's gonna be um, based off this diameter right here. So I drew this wrong. I don't know why I punched in that number, but the OD of the workpiece is 11 and 7 eighths. 11, 875. So I got my, I got my calculator right here just to make this quick. 11.875 divided by two equals 5.9375, which is five and 15 sixteenths. So our radius is going to be 5.9375, all right? 
And on our start and end point, we're gonna leave these uh, blank right here on our X and Y. I had to verify that through uh, Miltronics because uh, when I've done this before, this was throwing me off, the graphics was. Uh, for a flat round piece, we're just using cylindrical, the radius, and we're gonna do a Z value. So our start point, which is gonna be where we touched off on the top of the workpiece, that's zero. All right, and our end point is gonna be a negative number, the thickness of our material, which is half inch, negative 0.5. All right, and then that is gonna set up our stock, uh, our graphics, and then our work location right there. So we're gonna hit store. All right, we're ready to go to the next event. If you look down here at F4, there's a bolt hole. So we're gonna choose that. And up at the very top, we want, what cycle do we want? I'm gonna go with drill, bolt hole cycle. You have, you have drill, peck, uh, chip breaker. And so for this, we're just gonna be doing a spot. We're gonna do drill. We'll use, uh, you gotta punch, it, punch in your feed rate. So uh, you have a speed calculator here you can use. I'll show you that in a minute, but for that, we're just gonna go with 10. Uh, sp spindle speed. There we go, uh, spindle speed. Let me show you this. So, actually I did that wrong. One, zero for our feed. All right, spindle. Let's go to our speed calculator. And here, here's where I, I input it before. So you can punch in some values here and it'll give you your spindle speed and feed rate that you want. So a uh, 3 8 diameter cutter, two flutes. Uh, it's 90 feet per minute, which is a good Good range for a high-speed steel drilling through mild steel is uh, 90. So that gives us a speed of 916 um, RPM. So we're going to hit OK, and it drops it in there. It rounded it up to 917. Our return point, that's when after we drill, the drill is going to come up and stop. And I'd like to stop 0 0.2, 200 thousandths above the top of the Z0. Our final depth. So we're just spotting this, so we only want to go down, I'm going to go down 16th, so we're going to go negative 0 0.062, 62 thousandths, all right? Bolt hole center, and you see you got a graphic there, it's ask, asking for X, that's going to be zero. Next one is Y, that's also going to be zero. Bolt hole radius, all right, that's going to be the, the bolt circle diameter. Over here on my print, I've got that at 10 and a quarter. So that's gonna, what's half of 10 and a quarter? That's gonna be 5.125, five and one eighth. All right, angle of first hole. So if you look at the graphic on the Miltronics, if you start in the center and you go to zero degrees, it's gonna go to three o'clock position. So zero, 90, 180, 270. So I like that position. So we're gonna go zero on our angle of our first hole. Enter, number of holes, six. Number of holes in the 360 degrees. Uh, we want to drill all six of them, so we're going to put six right there. And then underneath that right here, if you ever need to skip any holes, you can punch in whichever number of hole that you want to skip right there. But we're going to drill all six, so we're going to hit store. And so there is our uh, spot, spot drill right there. And what you can do is verify this in the program if you want to you can continue let's go ahead and see the verification we're going to back out of this to our main screen and we're going to go to f9 verify make sure i did that right there f9 verify clamp ring version 2 we're going to select that and we're going to hit start and cycle start and now you can see the graphics are going to uh, verify what it is that you're doing. Everything's looking pretty good right there. And this is like running in real time as well. Just like if you're running a machine, it's gonna give you, the, give you the same output there. So 16 seconds, we've got our hole spotted in. That doesn't count the uh, tool change, by the way. So that looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and back out of this. We're gonna go back into our program and then we're gonna hit last, because that's the last, the last one that we worked on. All right, brings you right back to event zero, and you can cycle through here to go to next. There's our first event. 
and then we're going to go to next and we want to what do we want to do here we want to put in we want to insert a tool change f5 all right tool change now this is going to be our our drill that we're using to drill the hole so tool number i already know that it's tool number 16 and we'll put in a one half drill. Sometimes I can't find these keys. No stop command. All right, let's go to our speed calculator again. So just highlight the box, hit speed calculator. And then for up here, it's going to be 0.5. And we'll do a 0.5 right there. 90 feet per minute. So it's telling us 607, I'm sorry, 687 RPM and a feed rate of 6.87, but that's with a 5,000th chip load. But 6.87, so just highlight that and hit okay. It's gonna drop it right into your spindle speed. We want it clockwise. Uh, we'll, we'll do the coolant. I'm gonna manually hit the, the flood coolant whenever we're ready to drill the part so that when we're testing this, I don't have coolant getting everywhere. And so we can hit store. Now, that's got the tool chain stored. Now we got to tell it that we want to drill that same hole pattern. So we're going to go back to bolt hole. And this time we're going to select chip breaker drill bolt hole cycle. We'll use 10 inches a minute for our uh, feed rate. Clearance, 0.2. Final depth, I'm going to, I'm going to send that down to uh, negative 0.625. And I know that I have enough clearance between the bottom of the plate and that top of that jaw because it's sitting over that and that should clear through and we'll verify it with our graphics. Let me see here. So we want, we're going to go 0.125 on our brake clearance. Uh, peck increment up. Let's go 0 0.0075. Point zero zero seven five on our PEC clearance. All right, now we got to punch in. This is the same info that we did for our spot. So we want 5.125. That's the radius for our bolt circle of 10 and a quarter. Angle of first hole, zero. Number of holes, six. Number of holes, six. And then we're not going to worry about holes to skip. And we're going to store that. And that is it right there. We can go to preview. See, I've done something wrong right there. It's only drilling three holes. I don't know what happened there. So we're going to go back and see what I did here. Uh, see, I missed a couple steps right there. Uh, bolt hole center. I totally missed that. So we're going to hit F1 edit. Zero. Y. Zero. That's what I missed. We're going to store that. And we're going to hit preview. There's our spot. There's our drill. So that, that's really nice that you can preview it first to see if, if everything looks okay. I had a mistake there. I was able to jump right back in here to our programming and make the edit because I, I jumped over this bolt hole center X and Y. All right. So we should be good to go on this uh, program. And then this is the end of the program and what we can do right here is bring the workpiece to us in Y. So we're gonna edit this. We're gonna put a zero. That's a home zero. And we're gonna hit store. And now this is ready to go. So we can come back out to our main screen and hit verify and start and hit cycle start. We're gonna bring this up to 100%. And now this is gonna go through just like if it was uh, the machine is actually running and we're gonna check this out. So, we, so while we're doing that, while we're watching, you hit display, we'll hit auto. It's, it's already in the center right there, but you can zoom in and out, you know, with our graphics. Uh, you know, you can, you can pan if you want to. You can rotate. I think I can rotate it like this, yep. Look at our drill. Looks like it came through just like it's supposed to. And if you kind of get this out of whack, you can go back to uh, auto and it'll center it up again, kind of bring it to a home position. 
So we'll just let this finish and see what it's doing. See how long it's going to take us to do this. This may be off a little bit. They're showing exactly one minute right there. I don't know. I don't think that counted the tool change. So we're going to have a little extra time there for the tool change. But so what we'll do from here is another, one last step. We're going to test this in air. I'm going to go to perimeters, cords, and our Z. I'm going to punch in a two. That's going to bring our Z zero up two inches right there. So that changed this value right there. Now we can go and test this with our cutters and not worry about hitting the workpiece. So our program is all ready to go. And whenever we're ready to run this, we're going to go to F4 run program. We're going to hit F7 menu. And we want to make sure that we have clampering version two selected, which we do. And it's verified right there, clampering version two. So you got to make sure you're running the right program. All right, so let's go try, uh, try our air cut and make sure this is going to look good. All right, this is going to be our test cut. Cycle start. Nice. All right, so that took about 18 seconds to spot it. Now here's our half inch drill. You can see we just have that brake cycle, so it should break the chips. Hopefully that coolant spout ain't blocking you too bad. There we go, program is finished. So we just drilled our, our flange in one minute and nine seconds. So the machining obviously goes super fast and efficient doing this. It's the setup time that you have to take consideration. It's the time that it takes you as a machinist to be able to come to this program, this controller I mean, and build your program the way you want. This one is fairly simple to do. And if I didn't have the camera here, I probably could have gone through that a little bit faster because I'm not trying to explain it to everybody. But I'm excited about this. I'm ready to see some chips being made. So let's go ahead and cut our flange. So even after all that, I still realized that I made a mistake. I don't know if anybody caught it or not, but I forgot to add the tool change between event zero and event number one. So event number one, it goes to our bolt hole um, our, for our spot drill. So I've gone in here and I'm going to edit it and I'm going to insert a tool change. Tool number 15. We're going to use our speed calculator right here. 0.375. 916 RPM. We're going to Highlight the RPM and hit OK. Spindle direction clockwise, uh, no coolant, and we already set on our work coordinate right there. This is going to be our 3 8 spot. Three eight spot drill. We're going to store that, and now we can go to our next event which is our spot drill, 62,000 spot drill, everything else the same. So I missed that earlier. After you set up your stock right here on event zero, the next event is most always a tool change. And I just forgot to put that in there. So um, we got everything right now. So now we can go ahead and, and run our program. Before I adjusted the uh, coordinates, we'll go ahead and uh, test it out again. Remember I got to bring it down two inches in Z, but I missed that tool chain so it wouldn't do this here. And I, I also got the coolant set for the drill bit. That's why it's dripping coolant everywhere. I don't know how, how does this look? Kind of blows it out. I like leaving that light off. 
Yeah, we got it right. So I'm gonna let this uh, finish out. We'll adjust our, uh, our Z coordinate down to zero and then we'll go ahead and cut the plate. All right, let's make some chips. Here we go. Now I'm gonna keep my hand on the, the, the feed knob here just to, just to make sure that we're not sending a, a drill down through the part. Do this one a little slower. Looks good, 100%. All right, I'm gonna slow it down. Let's put our coolant on there. Let it drill. Looks like our chip brakes are working great. Eighth of an inch. That is it. A minute and a half is all that it took to uh, to drill this guy. You got a minute, 27 seconds right there. A few extra seconds because I adjusted the feed knob there to make sure our cutter was right. But we only got one of these to do and this is it. That is finished up. Now, you probably have been asking about the chamfer. Looks like I'm actually gonna have to modify it. I haven't, because of the different change in depth, uh, the waviness of our part, there's a hole there that's not drilled all the way through, and there's a hole there that's not drilled all the way through. Actually, there's three of them. Three of them. It should be right at the bottom. So we're going to make a modification on our Z-depth, and I'm going to run that tool again so that we can clear up those three holes right there. What I was getting at was probably wondering about chamfers but you can see what kind of issue that would cause with that wavy part right there we're going to just do that manually using the flex arm since i need to chamfer the bottom anyway it'd be quick and easy but let's uh fix those three holes there so event number four this is our half inch drill we want our final depth so we're going to edit our final depth let's go another i don't know 50 thou negative 0.675 we had 625, so that's going to add another 50 thousandths. And we're going to store that. And we'll go ahead and run just that tool again. So what we'll do is we're going to go to run program. Sorry. Start. Tool number. We're using tool number 16, so we're going to input that. And it's asking, yes, we want to start on a half inch drill. Is it cycle start? I'm not going to worry about coolant. Let's see what happens here. Yep, just broke through the bottom. This is where you could go in and modify that program where it said if you want to skip holes, we could have done that. We could have skipped the different holes and and not gone through the ones that were already all the way through there. That's all it took. Now it's ready to go. Check it again. Yep, punch through all six. All right, so this is finally drilled. Now we can go deburr it. Just going to use our flex arm to quickly deburr these holes here. Get 
get rid of those burrs, the bottom of the holes. And then I've got a drill chuck there with a chamfering tool. We'll use that. Use a little bit of our anchor lube on the chamfer tool. Really all it takes just a just a touch there. And that one I can't reach. That one I can't reach, so I'm messing up here. And what we can do is let's just rotate this around. Quick and simple, just like that. There we go. Now that's deburred. Very simple and effective way to just deburr simple parts like this without having to go through another tool change, another, you know, machining program. And we got a part that looks good. And it's ready to go to the fixture. So there it is. We have a successfully drilled clamping ring that I'm calling it looks just like a flange but you know the purpose of this video that I wanted to make was show how it is pretty easy to take a relatively simple part like this over to our Miltronics and use the conversational programming there to uh, do a simple hole pattern like we're doing right here you know we're all used to going over here to our manual mills and using that to get the job done I've done that thousands of times you know, it's not that I have any problem with doing that, but I want to utilize my new CNC machines and I'm continuing to learn how to use them as well. The, um, the software that's built in, the conversational software, I have been uh, training and trying to learn how to use Fusion 360 for CAD and CAM, or for CAD, you know, and um, posting out a, uh, a program that we're going to input in there to do it. But with the Miltronics, we have the conversational at our fingertips there as well. And it can be used to machine anything. It really doesn't matter what it is. They have a lot of capabilities built into that software. It's a matter of learning how to use the software, just like anything. Just like I'm trying to learn how to use Fusion, I'm still learning how to use uh, Conversational, but it's really effective for doing simple things like this once you start learning the basics of, of what you need to know to be able to get something done. The machining itself obviously goes much faster than having to uh, drill them one at a time in our manual. You know, you gotta, you gotta change the cutters out. Sometimes you gotta raise and lower the knee depending on what kind of tool you got. But it's the setup that still takes about the same amount of time. You know, and then you gotta spend a few minutes over there at the controller obviously like I showed you. And uh, once you get efficient at using that software, sure you can go over there in a matter of minutes and have a program written. But it's gonna take me a little while to get used to that. Uh, before I can go over there and quickly and efficiently write even a simple program to get something done quickly. But anyway, that I just wanted to share that. We've had a lot of guys, um, you know, leaving comments about some of the parts that we've done, about how easy it is that you can go over to your Miltronics and use that to get the job done, and they're right. And that's why I wanted to show for this part right here. All right? So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. I hope it was informative to some of you guys. And and uh, if not, maybe you got some entertainment value out of it there as well. So anyway, we will see you on the next project.